recording? Okay, I think now it's recording. Okay, we'll find out whether it recorded before. But this is the second video, uh, and in this one, we're going to talk about how do you generate the mid-plane surface to do the shell meshes, and a little bit about how to organize the files. So last time we imported the geometry in, this is still all the geometry. All I did here was just, uh, you know, these levels, these layers, these component layers under the model tab. You go under model here, and then you can see all these component layers. These are, I changed the default color, you know, just so they show up a little bit differently. Uh, they're all gray when you import them in, but now I've changed them to be very fancy colors. You can do whatever you want. UTEP colors or Christmas colors is all good. Um, and then the only thing I've done is I've added a material card, right, which we've talked about in the other videos. So it's the same way. So it's a matte one card for aluminum. Everything is aluminum. Uh, although there might be different grades of aluminum, they're pretty much the uh, young, the elastic properties are the same, OK? Um, all right. So like I said, most of what we're going to have here are going to be meshed with shell elements. All the elements, all the uh, components shown here are going to be done with shells. Okay, they all are perfect candidates for shell meshes. We'll talk about doing the, the rivets and connecting them in a later video, but for now, we're going to just mesh all the components with shell elements. Now, to do that, we have to make sure that the shell elements are meshed at the midplane of all these components. It's not too bad here because they're very thin, but on the on the spars you can see they're about a I think they're about an eighth thick. So there is some thickness to those as well. So we want to get those right. So we want to generate the midplane surfaces. All these pre-processing softwares have some way of sort of generating the midplanes. And so we'll do that in this lecture. We'll we'll actually do it for one of the parts. I'll generate a mesh on it and then put it on some layers, okay? So the way I'm going to do this here is I'm going to uh, put the elements for each component on its component level, okay? So let's do this back rib, all right? Okay. So I'm going to just turn off the all the other components and just leave the back rib. So I think I can just do it this way. Let's turn these. Ah, whatever. You just to highlight this, this toggles off the geometry. So the only thing we have showing here is the uh, the rear spar. Okay. And to generate the midplane surface, you go under here on these radio buttons and you click geometry. The first one. Now this allows you to make points and all that sort of stuff, but it also does ge geometry sort of cleanup features. And if you look right in the middle here, in the middle column down towards the bottom, it says mid surface. And that's the one we're going to use. So this will automatically generate mid surfaces. So if you click on that, it changes the, the window down here. You want to use auto mid surface. That's the easiest one to use. These other ones will help you if you get into a little bit of trouble. For the most part, auto mid surface should do it. You can also do stuff like gener you know, have two an outer and an inner pair, and it'll split the two, so on and so forth. You can use surfaces or solids. If you're doing surfaces, you want them to be the bounding surfaces. But in this case, we checked already. We have solids. This should be a solid. So that's what we're going to do. Here, we'll select it. And it did, so that means it's a solid. And all you need to do here is just say extract. There's some options here, but I never even really touched those. I bet you it'll work fine. OK, now when it does that, you can see it actually creates a new component. So now this one on the bottom, middle surface, has been created. And if we turn off the geometry for the rear rib, the solid geometry, you can see what's left is just that mid-plane surface. Okay? So there's the, the mid-plane surface it created. And here's the actual solid geometry for the rib. So you can see it's split right in the middle, has all the holes. Really easy to do. Okay? Now this is going to be what we're going to mesh. All right? Okay. So I'm going to generate elements here. And then I'm going to copy them from this collector, the middle surface collector, back onto the rear spar collector. So those are the steps I'm going to do. All right, so let's go back. 
here's that middle surface. So if we want to mesh it, if we're going to mesh it, that's all. these are all 2D meshes, so you click the radio button that says 2D down here. This gives you a lot of options for meshing two-dimensional geometries. Uh, auto mesh is the way to go. So auto mesh, you can pick that, and you can actually pick all the surfaces. I can pick all. Can I pick them by the window? Let's just pick by window, or just display. So there they are. That's all the surfaces, right? And here you can pick the default element size. Ten's a little big. Uh, I mean, this is inches, so like this length here is about uh, three inches, I think. So I'm going to set it to about a quarter. Let's just see what it looks like. You can do the preview and see what it comes up with. And that looks pretty reasonable. You know, if you want to tweak it, you can do a reject and you can change the number of elements uh, either you can these numbers indicate how many elements are going to go on that edge so you can toggle that around by right or left clicking now it's 24 25 uh, and or you could change it from 0.25 globally to like 0.2 and you can say recalculate all now you can see it changed the density. And the mesh is more refined now. Um, you could also bias them or change the message size to do all quads or a mix. So I usually do, the defaults are usually fine here. And usually you can get a decent mesh just with fooling around with the element size, okay? So now, there we go. Now we have a bunch of elements on there. It's meshed. All right change it to be shaded so you can see them all right now uh, as we talked about in class we're always interested in what are the element quality measures right so we can check that in hypermesh so those features are all under tool so you pick the tool and you just there's a button here third column on the top check elements and you can see each one of these things here is a measurement of element quality. So we're going to do 2D elements. You can select them, like let's just say Jacobian. You can wait. How do I pick up Jacobian 2D? Where does the thing where I select it? Okay, there it goes. Okay. So let's just go back and do that again. So if you go back, tools, check elements, select it, set it to 2D. These are different checks for 2D, 1D, and 3D. And then for example, here, if you want to see the elements, that have a Jacobian less than 0.7, you just click on Jacobian, and you can see that there are a couple. There they are, they're highlighted, okay? That's not too bad, actually. You can also check other things like aspect ratio. And there seem to be none that have an aspect ratio greater than five. Uh, you can check what other ones make sort of sense for quads. Warpage and skew, but there'll be there'll be none of those because they're all in the plane. So those will all be good. Uh, you can also, like if you do the Jacobian, you can actually plot the Jacobian. Here where it says standard, you can toggle that to assign plot. And if you click Jacobian, you can see what it does here. It actually plots on the mesh what are the Jacobians of the elements. Okay, so you can see most of them are quite good, especially away from the holes, but around the holes they get a little compromised, but still they're all very good. So even the worst one, the minimum is 0.69, so that's ostensibly 0.7 anyway, so I'm going to say that that is good enough. If your Jacobians are very poor, you can go back and delete the mesh, and remesh it again, and fool around with the parameters, okay? So you go back to 2D, uh, 
Well, if you want to delete elements, you can go under Tools, and then there's Delete. And then you can pick all the elements displayed, and then you can delete them. But I won't do it because these are fine, OK? So what you would do is delete them, and then go back and mesh again, and maybe make a more refined mesh so that the Jacobians are good. But we're not going to do that, right? So this mesh looks good. Uh, all right. So now this is on the middle surface collector. And what I really want to do is just to organize my model. I want to copy those over to this rear spar collector. Okay. Uh, you have to do a lot of this stuff. So whenever you're doing steps where you have to move things around or copy things or duplicate things, it's under the organize button. So again, it's going to be under tools. So if you go analysis, there's tools and then organize. And what we're going to do is we're going to move elements, organize elements from the middle surface collector to the rear spark collector. So which elements do we want to move? Well, it's all these. So we can click on elements. You can do all if you want. I mean displayed. Or we can even do by collector. So these are the ones that are on middle surface. We select those. There they all are. And where do we want to move it to? What's the destination component? Well, it's not middle surface. It's going to be rear spar. So rear spar. If you want to duplicate them, you can do copy. Uh, but we're going to actually move them. So here you're going to do move. And now you can see they've changed color because they're actually on that rear spar level. OK? All right. So you would do the same process for all the other components. And what you'd end up with is a mesh of you know all the mid surfaces okay and so I'm going to stop there we can delete this component the middle surface because it really doesn't do us any good now uh, well I'll leave it I guess just because in case I want to remesh it I'll leave that surface there but you could also organize that surface into there as well maybe we'll do that as well so if you want to move the surface it's still under organize but instead of elements we're going to move surfaces we're going to move them from the collector, the middle surface collector, and we're going to move it to rear spar. So there it is. Now they're in rear spar. Now I can delete this collector completely. OK, and there it goes. Save the model, and we'll go from there. So repeat that for all the other 10 components, and we'll pick it up in the next video. Okay.